and hi everybody. Uh, this is uh, Will Tegel. I'm dean at the Wisdom School of Graduate Study as a part of Ubiquity University, and we are happy to to host this call that is growing each month as we go along. We had such a beautiful and expansive response to the three participants, the three panelists last week, last month, that we invited them back for the next uh, step in conscious love. The persistent pursuit of possibility. And as we move into that uh, domain, I'm asking Judith to begin us and orient us with a moment of meditation. Thank you, Will. Thank you, everyone who's on this call. This is such a delight and such an honor to be with you all. Um, I was going to do kind of a long meditation, but a song comes to me, and I think it's perfect for where we are right now. Spirit, weave our circle tight. Hold us in your perfect light. Earth, air, fire, and water brings us to you. So just imagine that we're all sitting in a circle outside on the ground, surrounded by spirit, and bringing our hearts together as one, a hope. And just outside our uh, window here, just a few feet away, is a beautiful mountain laurel tree. We were talking about it earlier. It's uh, a roundish type tree that's completely covered in blooms, and they're purple blooms. They smell like uh, grapes, and within just a distance away you get wafts of this smell and we can even hear if we listen closely the buzz of our beehives around the flower blooms covered by hundreds of butterflies and each one of you brings a specific eco field into our circle today and as we're surrounded by this natural beauty we're encouraged, I'm encouraged, to think a little bit about love. Most of us, at some point in our education, has uh, struggled with the notion of love and how to express it. It's just interesting in our particular civilization that there are extremes of love. On the one hand, we have <clears throat> all kinds of movies about romantic comedies. Uh, we have pornography, we have all mm -hmm. kinds of expressions that in some ways induce embarrassment in us as we even contemplate love. The Greeks had three words that most of us know, uh, eros, philia, agape, and then the Romans added another word, caritas, for the expression of love. I like to think about some of my Native American brothers and sisters and some of the words that they use. From Muscogee Creek, listen to this word for I love you. Eno kika. Or uh, from the Comanche brothers and sisters. Ooh, kama utu, nu. I love that phrase. Ooh, kama utu, nu. Or from the Lakota brothers and sisters. I yo tan chila. And for those of you who speak fluently Lakota and Comanche and Muscogee <laughs> Creek, forgive my Texas accent. <laughs> So here we are considering the possibility of love. And when I use the word possibility, the persistent pursuit, the relentless pursuit of possibility, I'm actually talking about 
collapsing waves of possibility into actuality. And that there's something about our different practices that are deeply connected to whether these waves of possibility around us can collapse and become actuality of love. And just to give you an example of that, those of you who are in the United States, and really those of you who are outside the United States following our presidential uh, race, <laughs> uh, you just bring to mind one of these or more of these candidates from either party, really. And as you bring them to mind, bring to mind one of them or two of them that you really don't like. And when you bring that person to mind, some of their behaviors, some of their images, just notice what happens in your neuroscientific system, your brain, your nervous, your nervous system. And all kinds of responses start to come up. And then the question arises, is it possible for me to love this person while at the same time deeply disagreeing with them? And notice in our practices how often when we are confronted with these political figures or other figures in our lives, how we respond deeply inside and almost always with a critical voice that separates us from them. And so we live in the midst of a civilization that is more geared to separating and splitting than it is to joining together in the word of the Lakota, mitakya wasan. So that's the general context of our conversation today, where we have these three beautiful people uh, here with us. And I'm going to shift now and converse a bit with Kathy Mines from Toronto, Toronto, Canada. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Will, Judith, everybody. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Happy Back. Thank you for the uh, invite to come back. Yeah, well, everybody just, should I say, is fell in love with you three. We <laughs> wanted you to come back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How great, because we love them all, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so just, just beginning, Kathy, when, when I say, you know, we fell in love with you last month, what, what happens in your body? Oh, I feel that really, um, I, I would say goosebumps at first, but if I sit for a sec, it, it's like the pebble in the pond, right? You, you take it into the heart and it ripples out and I can feel that it ripples out well past my physical body. So I, I really thank you for saying that because it gives me uh, the opportunity to allow that beautiful vibration to ripple out. And which makes me think of what you were just saying about pulling things in. So if I'm sending out these ripples of love and receiving love and the idea of people who are loving me, now that's out there for people to draw in and use in their, you know, daily life. Yeah. Well, I just what I noticed in myself is that when, when I said, Kathy, we just fell in love with you last, uh, last month, I felt first, uh, a little tightening in my chest, a, a little embarrassment, a little uh, sense of I, I just maybe crossed the boundary that I didn't need to cross. And that's the cultural inhibition yeah. at collapsing this. And, and of course, your work is all about releasing some of this tightness that comes even with deep loving uh, with people. So tell us a little bit about it. But first, I wanna, I'm going to ask you a question before I open that up. How do you personally use your practice of yoga to open yourself to more loving connections? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that question. Um, what I have noticed over the years, and it's, a bit, it's, a, it's about a 20-year practice now for me, um, is that actually getting into the body and creating this freedom in the body has been 
probably the most liberating piece out of all of it. Um, you know, I can say, oh, the sitting in my peaceful meditations, I love all of that. But when I actually move my body, there's a kind of freedom that happens. Um, obviously, the breath, so really expanding myself and contracting, so getting back into my natural flow of whatever those tensions are that you hold on to, just because I don't want to, you know, get too big and I don't want to make too much sound. And we get into yoga and we start inhaling and opening up all of a sudden we don't usually raise our arms or show our underarms you know same thing you know all of a sudden we've got our leg up really high where typically we spend our you know 10 hours of moving around time in our day being quite polite and making small um, and drawing in so for myself that that being able to move the body and for it to be okay that I'm doing postures while I open up my heart, open up my throat chakra, all my energy centers, that has taught me that self-care is a sacred responsibility and that it can be done in such a gentle manner. And that freedom in my body, that makes it so easy for me to receive the words, like to hear that you, the whole community, fell in love with our conversation and us and that to me feels it just opens me up mm. and I would say it's because of the physical practice mm. that being said I would also say that it doesn't take um, anybody's capability of doing headstands or all of those you know really high-end postures I guess you would call them in the yoga it you don't need to have to participate in any of that to get what I'm talking about. And even last time when we were together, we did simple shoulder rolls. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody was all in that vibration of their own body, their own circulation, mm -hmm. their own life force, right? As soon as we remember it, even I would say, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Everybody together, do some shoulder rolls. <laughs> like, I, it, it happens so quickly. It, right. Like reach up, inhale and reach up. <laughs> and bring your hands over your heart. It just makes you want to smile and it taps you back into life force and and all of the possibility that's out there right every time we start to deepen our inhale it's I, I always get this imagery and maybe a lot of us we, we all have common heart thoughts uh, that we are having the same thoughts like I feel like I can breathe in good information and pull it into my body and share it, move it through my body, through the yoga, through dancing, singing, all of those things that we do that uh, kind of shakes our cells up and brings that vibe back. Yeah, and you just mentioned something I want to underline. Thich Nhat Hanh says, the most important yoga we have is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> So many times, like even today, I just got back from our teaching my morning class and, and I, I'm always saying and add a smile yeah. and you can feel the wave of relief because we can get very serious about, you know, being in our balance and making sure I do what the teacher says because I'm polite and, and all of a sudden there's so many rules going on in how we show up in our yoga practice that as soon as somebody says add a smile, it's just like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot I'm allowed to have fun. That's another, you know, piece of being, you know, pursuing persistently all possibilities is give it a go, right? Go to the places where you feel most liberated. And, and for me, it's always going to be body movement, yoga, get in the forest, move, walk, things like that. But wherever it is for you, uh, you know, your music and reading, whatever it is, and find that little spark where you feel, oh, I feel so open here. And every time you tap into that little spark, find the place that it's showing you in your body mm -hmm. and, and continue to keep that connection. Do, do you, uh, just for example, it comes to me, do you practice yoga when you go to the grocery store? Uh, I couldn't quite hear what you said when I go where? When you go to the grocery store. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like for example, what, 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 what might we see if you're in the grocery store? <laughs> well, what you will see for sure is a, is a big giant smile everywhere yeah. because yoga has taught me about union and about this connection, right? This yoke, this union, what, you know, what we really uh, mean by yoga. And I get out in the, in the public and I actually 
completely believe everybody is my family. <laughs> so I get out there and I feel it. It doesn't matter if I've never met you before. So you're that long lost cousin that I never quite met. <laughs> so I'm out there smiling. I'm out there in love. I, I'm a bhakti yoga. I am. I'm in service, and I a, a yogi, and I'm in service, and I love everybody, and I let my eyes land on everybody, and I have small conversations with everybody. Plus, now I've got to carry this load of groceries of my big smiley groceries home. So, also tending to balance in that way in my body. If self care is a sacred responsibility, then I have figured out. Please do not carry four bags bags of heavy groceries at once take your time do little trips things like that like honor my body I'm not trying to hurt myself so yeah I'm always making friends when I go out there <laughs> yeah yeah well we live in a small town and so I, I, the idea that that when you go to the the place where you're buying food to nurture yourself yeah. that, that your notion that people are family I'm gonna take that in so yeah. so as an experiment, mm -hmm. everybody's family. Yeah. I'll try that. <laughs> yeah. That cranky checker. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. one checker who's cranky all the time. <laughs> right? And then there's the person behind you going, oh boy, this is taking forever, right? There's a mishmash. It's the family around the family dinner table. And there's a little bit of everything. And and we get that in our where, wherever we gather. Right. We, there's an opportunity to experience each of us. We don't know, you know, who's in what place in their life at what time. Just because I'm out there all happy doesn't mean someone else isn't struggling. Right. But allowing it, not taking it on, you know, not letting it stick on your body. Sometimes, you know, the crabby checkout person is just that one person that pulls the rug out from under you. So, again, like last time we talked, these practices of radical resilience, being able to bounce back from, ah, it was, I didn't, it didn't say anything to that person. Why, you know, why have we gotten into some kind of bad vibe? But if we get into our breath and, and will, yeah, I love that appreciation for all the bounty that you're, you know, you're walking away with, get back into keeping the vibe high around your food. Um, maybe even, Carrying your groceries, like lifting weights, if you've got the air, <laughs> all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Okay, well, uh, we want to come back to you in a few minutes, Kathy. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm going to shift now from Toronto, Canada, to uh, Cochabamba, Bolivia, and uh, we have Jim Hickman. Hello, Jim. Hi, Will. So, um, you know, from from a masculine point of view, how how comfortable do you feel in um, expressing your connection with people with words like love? Not all people. Some people. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a mystery to me and there are a variety of components of it that I find, um, deepens the overall experience within myself, which I'd like to sort of introduce a little bit to everyone on this call. Go for it. So what I'd like to do for the next couple of minutes is take us all on a journey in which I will be, in a sense, the tour guide. It's, it's sort of a wisdom school magical mystery tour <laughs> of the heart-brain system. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of, when we talk about the pursuit of possibilities, there are a couple of possibilities capacities, let's say, that all of us have within us, not a lot of us use regularly, but all of us can. And it begins with just the imagination. 
obviously all of us have an imagination. And, and as we know from some of the neuroscience research, imagination has a very direct and significant impact on how the brain works and the heart functions and the overall body system um, comes together. So coming out of the yogic tradition, there are what have been called siddhis or powers that sometimes arise in, the, in a, in a long-term yoga contemplative practice. And there are two of those that we're going to use in this exercise. One is called the Animan Siddhi in Sanskrit. And it basically means the power to shrink the focal point of the mind to the size of the atom. The power of seeing the atom. And the other, a related capacity, is more colloquially called inner seeing. The capacity many of us experience um, spontaneously, and champion athletes talk a lot about the capacity to see the internal structures of our body. So we're going to go inside of our brains and our heart on this magical mystery tour, and we're going to use these capacities in whatever way is most comfortable for each of us. Some of us are, are um, more comfortable with feeling. Some of us see things. Some of us hear things. Um, or the imagination comes into play, and we create what we imagine might be there. All of these are essential parts of the experience we're going to have as we now begin to, um, in a sense, board the Magical Mystery Tour bus. A couple of things I'd say. One is that we've learned more about the brain and the heart in the last 25 years than we have known in all of human history. So as we begin to see and or experience and learn some of these, in a sense, details. Remember that, in a sense, neuroscience today is about where medicine was a hundred years after the invention of the microscope. We're just beginning. And over the next 25 years, much of what we believe today may change. It will certainly be refined. The model will continue to expand, and our pursuit of possibilities will expand with it. Mm -hmm. So picking up on what Kathy was saying and what uh, Will commented on in the beginning, let's just begin by getting into a comfortable position, relaxing the body, and always good to begin with a couple of deep breaths. So just inhale comfortably for the time you like. Hold it for a second or two and exhale slowly. And you might put your attention on the surface of your tongue because this inhale, exhale exercise activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is a part of the brain-mind system that is, con that is associated with relaxation. And the nerves on the tip of the tongue are all connected to the parasymp parasympathetic nervous system. So as we breathe, putting our attention into the mouth, onto the tongue, the roof of the mouth, assists us in just relaxing. And when it feels comfortable, we'll begin this tour in the center of the head. I'd like you to move your attention from your breath, keeping this slow breathing going, moving it up into the center of your head, in a sense, the center of your brain. And just focus your attention there for a minute. Get a feeling for what it's like here inside this extraordinary structure we call a brain, the center of the nervous system of the body. 
It's about weighs about three pounds, one and a half kilos, two to three percent of our body weight. Uh -huh. And yet, something we've learned over the last 40 years, which was a complete surprise, is that that two to three percent body weight, which is a kind of tofu like mass, consumes 20 to 25 percent of all of the metabolic resources of the body. Taking the glucose and the oxygen from the blood because in this brain and if you keep your attention in there You can begin to feel this and hear this the blood is just rushing Through every aspect of this brain and the brain is using 20 to 25 percent of the metabolic resources contained in that blood and It's on 24 7 no matter what is going on with consciousness it's doing this when we're awake. It's doing this when we're asleep. If we're in a coma, 24 seven, 20 to 25% of metabolic resources are flowing through and being used by the brain. And one of the things we've learned is that the brain takes the shape of what the mind rests upon. So as you fall asleep at night, the last aspects of your mind are influencing the form and structure of your brain as you sleep. It's a very good time for a certain kind of practice. So deeper into the brain now, just again, experiencing, looking around, getting a sense of what this is, one trillion cells held in this small mass inside of our head, 100 billion of those cells we call neurons. They are the information highway of our mind, of our brain and mind. 100 billion neurons throughout this small little mass of, of tissue inside of our head just Feel for a minute the enormity of this and the minuteness of this structure. And each one of those neurons is like an on and off switch. It carries information and it passes information to another neuron. And it does that through a little appendage we call a dendrite. And there are 5,000 of these connections between each neuron with every other neuron. 5,000 connections, 100 billion neurons, all passing information like an on-off switch. Either it's on or it's off. Either information is flowing or it's not. Five to 50 times a second. So just feel into this unbelievable information highway inside of our head. Five hundred trillion synapses between these neurons where information flows or not. And that means that the possible states of the brain in terms of neurons through the synapses sending information or not sending information is 10 to the one millionth power. Ten followed by one million zeros, number of states the brain can occupy in any one instant that affect the number of states of mind. This is this incredible organ inside of our head. It is in fact the most complex entity in the entire universe that we know of. 10 to the 1 million power states of mind and number of atoms in the universe, 10 to the 80th power. The states of mind of our brain far exceed the total number of atoms in the universe. It's the most complex system we know of, way beyond global warming, way beyond two 
black holes merging together three billion years ago and sending out an electromagnetic signal that is a gravitational wave that we just a couple of months ago were able to measure for the first time because of 21st century technology way beyond that complexity. So just feel into this incredible miracle of nature, of life that has come forth into this body to form this unbelievable complexity of states of mind, pursuit of possibilities of states of mind. And the first aspect of love in this regard, which relates to love of ourself, which to me is the first component of love of another, is gratitude. Just sink into an experience of gratitude for this unbelievably complex structure that allows us to do all of what we're doing right now. And just take 15 seconds and sink into a sense of gratitude for what life has unfolded in this human body. And what goes along with that is a sense of responsibility because, as Will indicated, this same brain, which has unfolded over about two million, two million years, but this particular brain very specifically evolved over the last 150,000 years when, the, when Homo sapiens as a species began to appear on the Earth. The evolution of this brain is based in two particular areas, one of which was survival. We talked a little about it last time. And it's become known as the negativity bias of the brain. It isn't just about negativity. It is about the fact that in order for us to survive as a species starting 150,000 years ago, we had to have an alarm system inside of our brain that always looked for threats to our survival. And then over time, cultural evolution has reinforced that inside of us. So as Will points out today, in the presidential election, you see brains, in a sense, people that are driven by a sense of whenever they feel bullied or belittled or, or unfairly accused of something, they strike out. Fear, aggression. Fear, aggression. And the interesting thing about evolution in the brain is that while this dominates us, the news, all of the news is primarily driven by bad news because bad news is something that in a sense is comfortable within us even though we suffer. But what evolution also gave us in this brain, and look around, get a sense of it here, the untapped possibilities, the positivity side of this brain, because built within this brain is the possibility that mind, changing your mind, changes the form and structure of the brain, and that changes the mind. So you're not, so we're not, we're imprisoned in a sense by this negativity, but the, but the liberation from it is built within this same brain. So in our tour, just, again, sink into this possibility that this negativity bias, this fear and aggression, this impulse towards separation, as we'll put it, is balanced by the possibility, by the probability, by the characteristics built within us for joining together, for developing the positive side of life as Kathy put it, in the line at the bank, instead of getting upset and impatient because so-and-so is taking a little too much time, we can also move into a different side of our brain and heart. And so the second part of love I want to touch on is compassion. Compassion for ourselves. Because as we 
explore this part, experience this part of our brain, the compassion to know that on the one side, evolution sends us in a second specific direction. On the other side, it liberates us. If we take responsibility and actively participate in the unfoldment of what this brain holds for us. So just sink into this compassion for a moment, which is a, an essential part of love, compassion for yourself, compassion for the presidential candidates who are always being driven by this, by this, in a sense, prison warden around the negativity, around the fear, around the aggression, around the separation. It reminds me of an experience I had the other day where I, I saw a news report of, it was a small little store, 7-Eleven type store, woman clerk behind the counter, and a young man comes in, and he draws a pistol, points it at her. And obviously, he's saying, give me your stuff. And she said, no. And he said, give me your stuff. And she pulls a hammer out from underneath the counter and starts smashing on him and chases him out the door. And I'm like telling my wife and my 10-year-old son, Danny, about this. And I'm kind of laughing because it was kind of funny. And Danny says, Daddy, that's not funny. Mm -hmm. Both of them are suffering. Mm -hmm. So this compassion is about all of this suffering that we infringe upon ourselves, that we experience with others. And the compassion then drives this tour a little deeper into our body. So as you relax a little further, feel yourself traveling a little bit down further into the chest and get a sense, put your awareness into the heart, either into the center of the chest where the heart chakra is or into the physical heart itself. And deepen your awareness into this part of the heart-brain system, because there's another thing we've learned in the last 20 years, led primarily by the Institute of Heart Math, that the heart has its own neural structure that is very similar to the brain, that the heart and the brain are in intricately interrelated in a way that cannot be separated from one another, that the heart actually sends signals throughout the body and to the brain-mind system about the state of our health, about our emotions, about decision-making. The heart and the brain actually work closely together in this regard. And there are four different ways we've found that the heart communicates, both to the brain and to the rest of the body. One is through, this, through the nervous system. The heart is intricately in, connected into the nervous system of the body, the neural structure of the body, neurons to neurons, heart neurons to brain neurons, always exchanging information on or off, but always exchanging information. And secondly, through the hormonal system, biochemically, hormones come out and they carry information. And then there's something called a pulse wave the heart generates. It's a biomechanical wave the heart generates through the body that gives us a sense of our overall well-being, how we're feeling, what it is to be in relationship with someone else. And fourth is electromagnetism. The heart generates an electromagnetic field larger than the head and the brain. But the heart and the brain electromagnetic field are interconnected in such a way that go way beyond the physical body and then interact with the electromagnetic and life fields of all life around us. This is where the eco field and the human system interpenetrate one another. And so as we deepen into this compassion in the heart, we get a sense of our connection to all of life around us. And we can feel one another on this call through our heart and our brain systems. And we can feel a deepening compassion and love for Mother Earth and a sense of compassion for Mother Earth and, it, and her tough love that she's now sending 
to one of the best and most abundant species ever to appear on this planet. But, driven by these various notions of fear and aggression and separation and its dominance, etc., Mother Earth is saying to us, you've got to stop raping and pillaging me because I'm giving you my splendor in whatever way you want it and forever. But I'm not going to let you destroy me. So we deepen into a sense of compassion and love on a heart-brain system into Mother Earth in the largest way possible. And all of this comes to life through the work of Kathy and Jane, for example, because it is this incredible body that houses this incredible system that we can have this experience of together and separately whenever we want. So as we come back sort of to the discussion and out of the, as the magical mystery tour in a sense comes to a stopping point for a minute, a couple of things to remember. One, one main thing to remember, this minute is what matters. And the next minute, and the next, and the next, and the next minute, but in this minute, if we take care and responsibility of our heart, brain, body, mind system, the year will take care of themselves. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Thank you so much, wow. Jim. And that was that was really quite a mystery tour. And and uh, thank you. And and also toward the end of our time together today. We'll, um, Sheila will link us with some possibilities of further studies on the heart-brain system uh, that Jim will offer a course uh, in beginning in April. So, in some ways, if you if you got a taste of this today, <clears throat> which is really a nice taste, a little bit more than an hors d'oeuvre, <laughs> uh, then. We'll have 12 sessions where we'll be able to explore this and actually move into some of these deep meditations. And, you know, the, as a practicing psychotherapist for over 35 years, uh, I know that the power of possibility for the mind to shape the brain and the brain to shape the mind far surpasses, transcends, it can include medication, but it far surpasses, mm -hmm. that possibility far surpasses anything that we have invented, the power of our mind to shape our brain and our brain to shape our minds. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's uh, shift over to Jane, Jack. We go from Cochabamba, Bolivia, to San Antonio, Texas, <laughs> out in a parking lot somewhere. <laughs> so, hello, Jane, Jane, Jack Morales. Hello. Hi. So, so uh, some people may be new to this uh, session today, and they've read that you're a myofascial release therapist. So tell us just a little bit about what that is before we proceed. Okay, I'll try to put it in a nutshell. Basically, I work with the fascia, which is the largest system in the body. It used to be considered packing material. It's that white stuff that connects and separates everything in your body. And it does that all the way down to the cellular level. It can get restricted from trauma, emotional trauma, like that, that, uh, the, that wild part of us that Jim talks about where you're oh, the defensive part of us. Sometimes we get frozen there and our fascia actually, the shape of it and the way it works, it gets hardened and stuck together in bracing patterns uh, that, that are just habitual and they 
they're completely unconscious and that your fascia there, it actually shapes your body. So you also just from injury and just life, you know, you get, um, you get restricted areas where it gets tight and thick and when it should be kind of gooey and gel like and hydrated. And so the pressure that I use with, I put with my hands causes hydration in the tissue. It actually, it works like a, like a, um, your screen on your phone, it's a piezoelectric effect. The, the sustained pressure, you hold it long enough, three to five minutes, the fascia goes, oh, hmm. It gets, starts to vibrate. You resonate with your client and it will hydrate. And then it assumes a more healthy, stretchy um, state of being. It, it goes through a, there's actually a, well, it's a long story, but that's basically what happens. So it kind of gets unstuck. And you have um, more possibilities as far as ways your body can move and take um, take hits. Uh, you get more bounce, literally. It, it makes you more bouncy. But it, it, in terms of possibilities, it broadens the possibilities for motion and vibration in your body by a lot, a whole lot. So, so yesterday I was having a conversation with a somewhat famous country and Western singer that I happened to bump into in another setting. And he had, has been going through a very serious cancer. And we started talking and I told him about Judith and so on. And he said, well, what, what, what are you doing, the two of you, that would help me recover in my journey with cancer. Mm -hmm. So I gave him your phone number. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> speaking of cancer, like if you think about what happens is the fascia, it tightens the cell away from the wisdom of the rest of the body. It's that separating thing you're talking about. That's what cancer is. Uh -huh. And it's surrounded and it's, it's removed from communication and the wisdom of the rest of the body. And it gets all mixed up and does, things you know that cause the cancer so that's how we think of it with mfr so so yes, thanks i want to ask you a question now that i, I asked kathy how do you use either giving or receiving mfr in in assisting you with moving into the possibility of love compassion gratitude that uh, jim was speaking about well it's kind of interesting because um giving it and receiving it at least 50 percent of it if not more is the same because it's getting to a barrier in the body of your client you you push in physically with your hands first of all i want to go back and tell you that as a little kid i touched everybody all the time and i i got in trouble for it all the time I couldn't keep my hands off anybody or anything. And I was just constantly shamed for that. And um, I knew like right away that that was for me the, the way to go, but I couldn't, it wasn't allowed. Um, so it took me a long time to come, come back to it. But because it, that's that whole tightening down thing, like your heart tightened down when you said people fell in love with us. Well, God forbid you go, you, you touch anybody. You go to a doctor, nobody, they don't touch you. They don't even tell you, you don't even take your clothes off. How do they know anything without seeing and touching you? Anyway, that's. No, no, let's not slide over that too quickly because we do live in a civilization. It's a complex civilization. And because we've been separated from the natural order, we do strange things. Let's face it, as a human species, we're, we're, we're doing very, very weird things with each other. So we need laws that protect us from practitioners, for example. And in the state of Texas, there, there, in, in my particular licensure, uh, you, you're not allowed to touch your client that you're working with psychologically. And for good reason, because there have been, I was on the state board of examiners uh, many years ago, and, and there, were, there were professionals who took advantage of that. So yes, we had to have some kind of restriction, but we've gotten ourselves into this situation where if you go to, if your heart is broken and you go to a therapist and you're opening yourself up to them, it would be the most natural thing in the world 
to get a hug, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's against the law in Texas. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the the kind of convoluted thing we've gotten ourselves into. Mm-hmm. So so in in a way, I love what you're doing because it's giving us all permission to have gentle touch. Well, and it's not intrusive. Like, you know, with some of the body work, it's like, get in there and push it and change it and do it. And it's not very respectful. And it's, it doesn't work very well either. With MFR, you go to the barrier and you wait and see. And that is, there you go. And for me, you, you find the barrier and you wait and see what wants to let go. You don't make anything happen but you can't it's it's about touching it's about facing you know bear the barrier i'm thinking of donald trump i'm just imagining trying to touch donald trump trump he's like he's my politician that i chose (laughs) (laughs) so instead of just bracing against him and trying to make him into a better guy or you know push on his heart space and god damn it we're going to get that open Instead, I'm going to lay my hand on his heart and I'm going to wait and see. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wait and see. Anything is possible. And, and so you, if you don't wait, you, you eliminate possibilities. So that's why when, when I work with a client, I really do. I wait until the tissue opens up and then I don't go where I think it should go. It works better if I just go where the tissue goes and I follow it to the next barrier and then I wait and see there. But to answer your question... I, you know, there's so many things I want to say that I, cause I'm so stimulated from hearing Kathy and Jim, I'm sort of overexcited, but <laughs> in, in my, I want to talk about, um, I want to kind of talk about sex and marriage and love there because, you know, after 20 years when all the usual methods wear away or they don't work anymore or they just don't fit with the energy level that you have waiting and seeing finding a way to touch and waiting and seeing is is you get this it's like instead of plucking the guitar string that's the thin one that vibrates really really fast and makes a lot of sound you go and you get the after years of being married you pluck that deep one the thick one and it vibrates big and deep and if you wait long enough Everybody feels that, but you and your partner can feel that vibration through touching, being touching still, you know, uh, and then it's such a much deeper vibration. And then it's like those two black holes, you know, that they just, they, you saw the video with, you know, there's the one black hole and the other black hole, and then they just merge and they cause this massive wave. And that's what it can feel like if you can feel if, you're, if you'll wait long enough and you'll feel into your body and you'll open up all that space in your body and all the fascia, if it's actually working, you can feel that deep, deep vibe. And it's just so good. And, and it's very, makes you more patient with all the other barriers in your life as a married person. Like he never remembers to lock the door the right way. I mean, that whole wait and see attitude is just so helpful. And I, and I think with kids, um, I've been working with kids a lot and they know how to love. I've, they, they totally know how to do it. Like they know a hand that's pushing them as opposed to a hand that's on their body. That's going to wait and see who they are and that they can respond to. And that is such a, you know, kids are in so much pain right now, like kids with disabilities we're all in a massive state of denial about the pain of our kids in our families, like physical pain, all different kinds of pain. And I feel like with MFR, you go in and you acknowledge that pain. You don't have to have any words. You just feel into the body and you wait for it to shift. And you're there with the, the kid while it shifts. So I want to do something along this line, because I'm intrigued by it. Um, do, do you actually use MFR with yourself? Like, yes. Uh-huh. yes. Well, well, show us, show us well, something you, that, that we could do that, that might help release. Okay. All right. I, I will. 
Okay. Um, I, I want to say also, Jim, while you were talking, I was getting a little headache before you started talking. And when I went in my head, like you said to go, my jaw just, just opened and dro dropped. And the more we went in there, my headache just went away. So I thank you for that. <laughs> but I think that practice of going into the inside of your head space and putting a little so-and-so in there and feeling your brain is so, so helpful. So I'm going to put the phone down, but I'm getting speak. So my jaw was bugging me. Let me put it right here. Oh, I don't like that view very well, but <laughs> take your hand and put them. I'm going to show you with one hand, just put it under right under your jaw bone, put your thumb right there and then put your hand just gently and flat on your cheek. And then you're going to do it with both sides. And then you're just going to push them together and then just pull forward. It makes a really cute face. But you don't slide on the skin. You just, you just push in until it doesn't let you push in anymore. And then slide it forward and kind of pull your jaw forward and let your shoulders drop and let your head get kind of heavy and wait. And, and just wait and see. Uh-oh, there we go. <laughs> just see if it'll, what it wants to do. And, you, and then just feel feel if there's something going on in the back of your head if your shoulders are tight because you're working your hands remember the chair that you're sitting on has one job in life it is to hold you up so you should let it and then you know then you want to breathe into that sweet spot that Kathy talked about last time you're going to breathe in you're going to hold your breath for a second and then you're going to let that breath out and then at the bottom of the breath, just don't bother to breathe again. And then see if your body wants to move. And just let it make, see if your head wants to go, just let it go and just see if there's, if your body just wants to move a little bit and then it might want to stop. And then it might want to move again a little bit more. So you're, you're actually activating the tissue and then the rest of your body gets in on the act. And the more permission you give it, the more it's going to unwind. And that unwinding is a big part of, of MFR because a lot of times it'll take you right to a position in space and boom, you'll have a memory about something that happened to you. And all of a sudden you'll go, oh, I survived that. And you come, your energy comes back into your body. And that little space in your body is now occupied by your consciousness where it wasn't before. So you can put it, you know, any kind of pressure, the body just loves pressure. You can put a hand on your head, compress your, oh, that feels pretty good. Get, just, come, just put your hand right on top of your head and just compress. And then the thing is, allow space for unwinding and then you if you come to a tight spot then you just hang out there and you don't do anything you just wait and pretty soon it'll kind of get hot and then maybe everyone has a different experience some people feel cool then you may want to move a little bit more and you think about you know like you don't want to go to end range and crank on something you you go, you think about telescoping all the time and you, and you imagine the pull going down, all the way down into your gut, into your pelvic floor, even from your ear. You just try to, it's like pulling roots, right? If you pull weeds in your garden, like you got your hand on your head and maybe you're pulling into your shoulder and there's, it's like a little weed, it's in the grass there. Well, if you pull it too hard, you're going to break it. You don't want to do that. You want to pull it softly and get all those little roots and then just pull them out. And it takes a long time. I, it doesn't even really start going for about three to five minutes. So that kind of gives you a good beginning feel, but you really have to give yourself three to five minutes for the, for the, the fascia to actually go soft and to change form. And then, then you may even have more movement and there might be more stuff that goes through your your Im you know, images might come to you, you know, physical memories, you never know. 
but that part of MFR is, um, yeah, Will, you're just going to stop me if I get going too much, but you can actually go back in time and have a memory of something that happened to you, and it feels like it's happening at the time, and then it you you actually will move and you get a chance to kind of finish that memory where it was frozen in your body and, and you get to you know what, that. that's one way we collapse pop possibility into a new actuality as we release the frozen nature the frozen aspects from the past into a new future. Well, look, thank you so much, Jane Jack. You're welcome. And um, we'll come back in a moment, but I want to shift over to Heather Ash Amara now. Uh, Heather Ash is actually conducting a warrior goddess workshop right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, Dan, if you can bring Jeez. her up. Are you there, Heather Ash? I am, hello. Hello, hello. I see you're there in a hotel room. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> so listen, just give us some of your responses. One response I have is, is how Kathy and Jim and Jane Jack all weave in together. Yeah, it's been so rich and so beautiful to hear each of you with this that deep sense of reverence for the body, reverence for the wisdom, deep patience, and how much when we come back to touching ourselves in whatever way, whether that's seeing inside of ourselves, that's touching. The beautiful meditation that Jim did of going inside and seeing, we're touching ourselves. Mm -hmm on the inside we're becoming more intimate with Kathy talking about I loved I came in a little bit late but of walking through the grocery store with the smile because she's letting her light she's feeling herself and you can feel it as she talks radiate herself out and she's touching all of herself and letting that go out and touching others and Jane your beautiful talk about patience and waiting and how we can give that gift to each other and to ourselves. Uh, when you said three to five minutes, I'm like, whoa, have, I do yoga, but wow, to just sit with my hand on my head for three minutes, I'm gonna have to get a timer to like stay. <laughs> <laughs> so that reminder for all of us that touch is so powerful and that there's so much wisdom in our bodies that we can support each other through presence, and that we can especially support ourselves to listen. What does this being need? What's, what's the craving? And to be patient and gentle and present and be willing to go towards the discomfort or the pain or the resistance to see what's there and let it speak so that it brings us the the deepest need inside of our being and so often where we'll speak to ourselves where our being will come back into communication is when it feels like it's met and in order to do that we we must slow down and listen and create those beautiful threads of connection with ourself again okay. however long it takes yeah well it's so good to to see you and i think it was that mystery tour we taken out took in our brain because i'm seeing beautiful colors in your hair <laughs> <laughs> and some so, neurons firing yeah yeah That's so, my, so, all my neurons are firing <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just coming out coming out <laughs> <laughs> that's great that's great well um i want to take a moment now dan if you explain to people how to hold up their hands so if you move your mouse to the top of the zoom window you should see a hand you can click on the hand and we'll see your hand raise and uh, will will call on you and then your picture will appear on the screen with the rest of the panelists okay so it, it, you'll have to scroll up and down, right? So you can see that. Uh -huh. So listen to me. I'm telling Dan how to do his job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. 
So um, I want to, while we're waiting to see if, if people hold up their hands, let's circle back, Kathy, with you and get your response uh, to um, our discussion today, thus far. Okay, uh, thank you all, all of you for your sharing and I, I, I loved everything and love being part of this circle. Um, one thing that stands out that seemed to kind of repeat uh, with all three of you speaking now um, is that as I think of this persistent pursuit of possibility or this relentless pursuit of possibility, you know, I've, I've got my goddess sword and I'm good to go and I'm gonna pursue. I, I would like to also remember that it is as gentle as a trickle of water. You know, we see all those beautiful images where water or wind has shaped rocks after centuries and it's also as gentle as that trickle of water. It is at everybody's own time. Um, I loved going back, Jim, into that tiny little spark. Everybody finding, getting inside to that tiny little spark. Um, and the patience, uh, Jane Jack, of, of waiting, mm -hmm. being patient with ourselves. And especially because, uh, you know, we're really talking about the body, both Jane Jack and I are uh, digging the, the physical. Um, the level of patience can be at its deepest with your um, opening of the body. So um, for me to say, oh, I love moving around in my body and that gives me liberation and I makes me happy. Somebody might look and go, oh my gosh, uh-uh, I'm not raising my arms, so I'm, I'm not doing that yet. You know what? Maybe it's one shoulder roll. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when we're all going inhale and reaching up, maybe I'm just okay today only to lift a little, or maybe I'm only okay to just lift a bit. Like, the possibilities are endless, and there is a place for every single one of us within it, no matter how... Uh, sore you are, sad you are, broken hearted you are, there is a place for movement. You, you can't get away with it because you're breathing. You can't pretend you're gonna freeze up because you are breathing. There will be that constant invitation to expand. Mm -hmm. And then there's always that willingness to contract on the exhale. You always can just go back in, see it. Am I okay? Yeah, I'm good, okay. Let's breathe, inhale again and expand. So it fits. It, no matter where we are in our lives, just nudging out of, po of this possibilities. It, all of us do it when we breathe. Oh, good. Thank you so much. And, and I'm uh, Lily Radden over near Cypress Creek uh, raised her hand. So, Lily, what's your comment? Oh, I've enjoyed the talk a lot. What's coming into my mind is Kathy just said something about things trickling. Jane Jack has talked about waiting. And Jim has talked about the changing of the brain. And last year in the neuroscience class, and I hope to enjoy this new one this April, um, I began writing a gratitude journal every evening. And what I have discovered is over a period of time, and just like a trickle and just like a waiting process, it's very hard now to have any kind of negative thought in my gratitude journal. It, they're, they're just gone. So I just wanted to share that little moment. Oh, thank you, Lily. And we look forward to seeing you in the neuro, neuroscience class. You always bring up our batting average there. <laughs> thank you. And, and, and speaking of neuroscience, Jim, let's get your, your uh, circle back to you to get your response to our discussion today. So um, there you go. Unmuting. There you go. Well, I um, particularly like what Kathy and Jay Jack, Jane Jack talk about in terms of, of the body opening up and releasing the possibilities because all of what we carry in the brain and our heart, et cetera, as Jane Jack is emphasizing, Kathy speaks to, um, are related to um, how much we hold the resistance within all aspects of our body. And as you both have emphasized, it just takes time. It's a little bit of a time. And we have to have patience with ourselves 
and that's why you know with the with the um, um, sense of of compassion for others, it's the same. It's um, we have to have patience with one another and recognize that we, in a sense, are all unfolding. Um, and we have this unbelievable repository of possibilities sitting within us. Um, and working with the body is it crucial to allowing those possibilities to, in a sense, circulate throughout our whole system. And I would just um, make one other comment because uh, we have not talked much about what Will has spent most of his life learning, which is the language of the eco-fields, the how to speak with and relate to nature, Mother Earth. And as I was saying toward the end, we have this incredible field which the body releases as it releases the holding and the resistance that interacts with this ecological field of all living beings around us at all times. And Will is one of those who knows intimately how to speak and understand what this message is about. So um, I think, and I think with Kathy and Jane Jack, um, the comments on the body, we can also, um, in a sense, project onto the larger body of Mother Earth because it's the same. We are now working more and more how we can manipulate, in a sense, the fascia of Mother Earth how we can, in a sense, do our own yoga in the larger field of, of all living systems to sort of create a different kind of possibility and a new kind of civilization. So I love, Kathy and Jane Jack, what you do. And of course, Will, I learn a great deal from you all the time about taking this beyond just how much our body and brain and heart create a wonderful mind and incredible ideas and but you know it takes patience it happens over time and jane jack i like what you say about being patient and waiting but sometimes it's really agonizing <laughs> in relation to wait do i really have to wait can't i leave no you gotta wait this is your teaching you know and i'm like oh god when do i stop learning but that's part of what this is about, I guess, you know? So thank you. Yeah, and, and I see that uh, uh, over in Budapest, uh, Georgie Zabo raised her hand. Do you have any? Did I? <laughs> oh, I didn't know I did. <laughs> it must have been accidental. <laughs> it must have been an invisible hand because I was quite surprised as well that I'm on the panelist. I was like, gosh, I didn't prepare to speak at all. <laughs> this <is my> <laughs> I'm, I'm here to learn from you guys, but we're just happy. But I'm happy. We're just happy. To I'm happy to share a few things. words with you guys. Well, well, thank you very much for. Uh, for your wonderful presentations. I'm always so happy to learn new things and new approaches and, uh, and, and all of them, all, all your words and your, your emotions and the way you, you smiled and the way you just, just carried your passion through your presentation just made me really, really happy that I'm part of this community. Um, and also um, a, a, few, a few words I would like to share with you which are that how we are evolving, that how we are learning from each other and, and the stages we are at uh, um, almost on a daily basis, they're just, they're just different. It is really the present moment we have. That's what we have and, and, uh, and the future we can ascertain, we can, we can hope for, we can, we can abstract it with our frontal lobe and elsewhere. Um, and, um, and it was... I'm going to try to some of the practices that Jane Jackman was, was talking about. Of course, yoga as well. It is just wonderful. And Jim Hickman, he's always one. He's always great. He is always like, uh, so try not to be biased here really because he's my colleague. Um, um, 
it is not always easy to to choose a a certain um, a modus operandi uh, to uh, to which to adhere to and which practice to follow. So I'm very much of the person that I would like to mix and match and to create a melange and see how I feel on a daily basis. And many times I really, really love just the feeling of being in a present moment and see what comes to me, whether I need to move my body uh, in ways of like dancing or I need to do some yoga moves or I need to just sit quietly and see what images I have. And um, lately I've been, I've been practicing more and more that approach, that very laser, laser focus that you guys were talking about, that to open my consciousness or rather really open my, my perceiving uh, funnel and, uh, and to see what comes uh, comes in to me and and see what messages I'm getting and and what you were talking about all that uh, that messages from from the from the past and present and from the outer realm and and there are so many things we don't know and many times I feel that it's okay it's totally okay not to know but it's just good to feel and to be I think that's that's more important than anything else and to to have that wonderful smile because there's so much to smile about. So I agree with you all. And thank you so much for your presentations. I really, really appreciate everything you have done for us. Well, thank you. Thank you, Georgie. And I just wanted to bring your good energy into our community today. So thank you. And Jane Jack, any last a couple of sentences from circling back as you respond? Um, no, not really. There's just... Um... I think, I guess one thing that I will say mm -hmm. is that I do feel on these calls, once I settle down and I, I, I do feel the field of us, the field that we're creating on this call, I do feel it and I feel it in my body and around my body and it, and it's, you know, it's like, you know how you were saying, oh, it's a little embarrassing to say the words, I love you. Well, it's also a little embarrassing to say, I feel this shit. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it in my body. I know it's happening. And it's people just don't want to hear that. They don't. Uh, or a lot, some people don't. So it's very nice to be in a community where we, we know it's happening. It's not just a belief system. We can feel it. And it, it's, uh, you know, if I can feel it in my body, I can pretty much count on it. That's my MO. So I'm glad that I, uh, I can feel the connection with, with all of you. I feel it in my heart and I feel it kind of around my right shoulder and in my back. And it's really nice. And thank you. Well, and thank you, Jane Jack Morales. And thank you, Kathy Mines. And thank you so much, Jim Hickman. You guys have, have, have enriched us. And next month, uh, just as you were talking, this little bird came uh -huh. right up and was circling around here. And and next month we'll be having guests from a wonderful redwood forest reinvention of civilization that happened last week. And as a part of that, we are actually going to see a plant talk. So not only are we going to have humans, we're going to have a, a guest of a talking plant. And all of you, we've had a really nice large group today. I guarantee you, you're going to see a talking plant <laughs> next month. And you're going to be able to say, this plant is talking. Uh, I, think, I think you will anyway. Uh, so uh, let's see. Um, Kathy, did you have one last thing to say? Wait a second. Unmute. Oh, am I unmuted? I had this great idea, but it was a little late to implement. Uh, so next call, and how exciting that there's a plant as a guest. Um, I'm going to gather some, uh, like maybe some other of my teachers from my yoga place and friends, and do this as a group. Oh, wow. And I, I wanted to throw it out there because we don't have to all run off individuals to our own little places. We're all going on the call. If there's people in your community, a couple of buddies or what have you, and I know that you, some of you in Texas get to be together, but um, I'm going to, I'm going to have a gang next time. Oh, good. So I thought I'd share that idea. If you do, we'll bring the whole group in. Okay. <laughs> all right. That's great for sure. I just wanted to share that. If anybody had the same thought, gather up. Yeah. 
Good. Yeah, yeah, we can be a gang together. Yeah. And and then Sheila, I see you coming into the picture with Heather Ash. And did you have something to say? We are a Texas gang. <laughs> yeah. We're listening, Sheila. Thanks. Hi, everybody. So we just posted on the chat a way for you to register now for our next call in April. And then I'm about to do the neuroscience. And we're about to post the way that you can uh, get more information and register for the neuroscience class as well. Great. Yeah, good, good, good. Well, I'll just say you can, you can tell from being with Jim uh, on, on these two calls that if you'd like to have your mind blown a little bit, well, <laughs> join in. That's what we're going to do. We're going to blow our minds and, and uh, let our brains change and let our brains change our minds. And before you know it, we'll have purple hair. <laughs> okay, so Judith, you, you want to bring us to a close? Yeah, sure. Um, well, some of you know that my name is Singing Medicine, so I always want to sing a song. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, there's a whole bunch of songs about love, but we, I've sung them before, so I'm going to sing this other one. I think some people know it, but I like it a lot. When the people live their lives as if it were a song, for singing out of life provides the music for the stars to be dancing circles in the night. Cha cha cha. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's 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 do it. Even though we're a little inhibited, just uh, everybody say you love everybody else here. I love, love I love myself and everybody else here. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I, I love you, and I love you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. pause. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you next time. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.